on my mic, Grant. He's just heard the red town total. Which Grant is that? An endangered? Oh yeah, this is a guy. The whole calling. So it's easily about 20 or 20 or so tall in here. Wow. So this is actually a breeding site. So this species, um, they lay their eggs uh, on land in the sort of leaf litter here, where the tadpoles will start to develop. And then you'll get a big rain event, maybe a month or so later, and it'll flood this sort of pond. And the tadpoles will hatch out of the eggs already as half developed. So that would be how they grow up here. And whereabouts do you find red crown toadlets? Uh, only around Sydney, so they're only found on the Sydney sandstone. So little gullies or drainage lines in the sandstone areas. In a sense, it always sort of helps to, you know, keep record of all threatened species. So it sort of helps understand. In reality, sort of a red crown toadlet, you know, it is listed as a threatened species, but because it occurs in, you know, national park areas and a lot of the habitat is quite well protected, but uh, different species it can be a, a quite a different story for. So. You know, a record for something else like a giant burrowing frog, for example, would be you know, a bit more significant. So um, it varies species to species. So where you find the red crowns, you often find the giant burrowing frog. I mean, I've seen both species here. Yeah, yep. often in similar places. So burrowing frogs use a bit more sort of permanent water, um, often further down. So where the, you know, along more pooling sections of creeks rather than quite ephemeral sites such as this one. I'm an eco ecologist and an amphibian biologist, so I work on frogs. I'm actually out doing a PhD on a different frog species, so, yeah. Awesome, man, it's good to see you got your white patch on your on your pack there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome, I've got mine on today too, so I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, yeah, as a, as a teacher, I'm on my white patch as well, so I've got a lot to learn. Be humble or be humbled is my saying for 2021. And um, it's very humbling being out here with Grant and learning about all the amazing frog species. How many frog species do we have in Australia? Uh, 246 or 47 okay. or something like that, yeah. Yeah, wow. About 30 in the Sydney region. Yeah, yeah. so not that many really in the big yeah, scheme of things. Yeah. So they're all up on the side of the banks here, right? They lay their eggs a bit higher up, so when the water floods, it only hatches when it reaches its full capacity. It only hatches the eggs. And have you found by doing their calls that they'll respond? Yeah, really... they're very territorial. So you can actually hear that they make two kinds of calls. There's like an eh, and an eh. And often, they often do the eh, eh more. And that one of the calls functions as a way to attract the females. It's only the males that call. And the other call functions to sort of tell the other males to go away. So the eh is the one that we think is the one that they use to attract the females. And the other one, the eh, 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 is like one that the they t tell the other males to go away with. So if you do that wow. eh, eh, call, often they'll respond quite aggressively. Have you ever tried it, um, trying to attract female humans? <laughs> I don't think they respond to frog calls the same way the frogs do. You'd be surprised, <laughs> So here we have a red crown toadlet, Sudophony australis. So as you can see, it's got his nice little red crown, which often in these um, populations on the central coast is more of a sort of an orange. And they'll have it on the top of the head and also down towards the vent. But um, yeah, it's a threatened species, but relatively common in the right type of habitat. And you can hear there's a few calling in the background around us. They often form these little colonies. And they all sort of live together. Would you mind putting your finger in there, or I can just um, for a size comparison so people can see how tiny it is? Yeah, so you can see it's just that size. A bit, bit bigger than my fingernail. So, why are they called a toadlet as opposed to like a frog? Um, because apparently they resemble uh, small toads or a mini toad. And actually, the name Pseudophrony, which is Pseudophrony, means false toad in, in Greek, probably. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the early people who named them thought they looked like toads. But uh, they're, they're a species of frog, so they're not related to the toad or cane toad. Um, any, any toads, really. 
But yeah, belong to the Australian dog family, my the Tracker Day. So they're very um, Australian species. But um, yeah, red crown tigers are only found around Sydney. So one of our threatened species that are really well adapted to the sandstone environments in this area. So Grant, here we've got another, is it a threatened species, endangered species? What's uh, the status? Endangered, um, I think it's endangered in New South Wales and vulnerable nationally, so it's listed both state and federally. Uh, it's a giant burrowing frog, Heliophorus australiacus. So these are the tadpoles you can see in the tree here. Wait, let me get my head around the uh, taxonomic name, Heliopreus. 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 Australiacus. 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 I'm not sure what Heliopreus actually means, but Australiacus refers to it being southern. So. Southern. Yep. And uh, so this is the tadpoles. How do you know? That's um. It. How do I know that the burrowing frogs? Yeah. Yeah, um, well the big really plump body size is a good indicator. So you can see on some of the larger ones, they're really quite round. Um, often they're quite dark, the habitat that we're in, so if you see this little creek here, is basically perfect habitat for them. It's a little um, more ephemeral kind of stream in sort of sandstone forests. What do you mean by ephemeral? So it dry, it'll dry up, so if you came here in probably a dry summer there wouldn't be much water. So uh, it's kind of similar to the red crown toilets, these guys sort of lay their eggs but off to the side of the creek, um, in a little sheltered, uh, small area. And then a, when a rain comes through, it'll wash them all out into the main part of the stream. So you can see there's even a few sort of different size classes here, some larger ones and smaller ones. So there's always been a little bit of breeding activity. Um, usually these guys breed in, in autumn. So, uh, you know, winter now. So this is why we have plenty of tadpoles around and they'll be hanging around in the spring when they change into frogs. So. And it seems to coincide with um, with some of the uh, yabbies that we get in the area as well. I've seen quite a few little yabbies around. I can't see them now. Oh, there's one. Yeah, no, there's just one. Right there. Bit of movement going on. What can you tell us about the giant bowing frog? I, I remember you saying, mentioning something about the spike that they've got. Yeah, the, the males actually have really big spines on the thumb. So if you ever see a big male one, they're, they're quite a large frog in terms of frog. So maybe sort of orange sort of size, um, quite plump. And the males got these big giant arms and he had really, really sharp spines on, um, on the thumb. Do you know anyone that's been spined? No, but um, apparently they can draw blood, and I've been bitten by a giant burrowing frog. <laughs> really? What yeah. happened there? And, well, it was crawling along the edge of the creek, and I decided uh, you know, I wanted a better photo of it, so I was trying to move it, and I picked it up, and it, yeah, it just bit me. And um, yeah, my hand was bleeding. So. Yeah, right, did it bite down hard? No, but it was just something you don't really expect from a frog, so... Yeah, usually, yeah, you, maybe a, a reptile, but no, that was sort of the shock more than anything. Yeah, right. But yeah, they're a really cool frog. You don't really see them very often. So in this area, there'll be quite a lot, but um, they disperse quite widely from a breeding site. So the males pretty much just and the females will come back to the breeding site, you know, in autumn and, and breed like the next generation of tadpoles. And then they disperse, you know, kilometers sometimes away. So you can pick them up on walking tracks, you know, well away from any kind of um, breeding site. And I guess that really says, you know, and frogs aren't just aquatic animals, they really are a land animal that moves you know, all through the forest and in order to help protect the frogs you've got to protect more than just a little drainage line and really preserve you know, more bushland. Uh -huh.